Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing the part two series of how I make $1.4 million, but it's still broke. So we're very quickly talking about how we grow, how we will betray, and where we are today. So we were invited by Michael and Suzanne Silver to 640 Burke Street, Eliza Tinsley Building, initially at level two, to actually have our camera cafe and our shop, which is pretty cool. Michael and Suzanne Silva runs Magnet Gallery, which has which is a very nice photo gallery, and they also run uh, PhotoNet Fine Art Printing. So with the combination of them and us, it will be a very nice photography hub. Um, but then after a while, we got the opportunity to actually expand our business. We will offer some film developing machine, and we thought, oh. This is going to be a very good complementary business into our current camera business and film. So we did a Kickstarter and raised some money so that we can actually buy the machine uh, and move to 640 Burke Street Level 1, Old Australia Post Building. We are very lucky to meet some amazing landlord where we only pay minimum rent with outgoings, uh, which is great. The contract is month by month. Uh, because whenever the building permit comes in to build a skyscraper, then we will need to move. So we are very fortunate to have good opportunity to grow the business in 640 Burke Street. You can see some of the event we did here. And just about this period is when um, we experienced our first very heartbreaking moment. Our first heartbreaking moment where some of our staff started to betray us behind our back and sneakily build a lab behind our back. Um, one of them is my wedding photographer and another one is my groomsman. Yeah, as you can imagine how heartbreaking that was. Um, to be honest, this was probably almost almost 10 years ago or 7-8 years ago and only recently we just recovered from this incident and started to forgive them fully. Um, it's very heartbreaking. Um, they even started to sabotage my reputation and film nurse reputation. But I remember a wise man once says that never go wrestle with a pig because you both get muddy and the pig likes it. So that's a very good saying where I just run my own race, look at my lane and just keep being honest with myself and see how I can do better. One thing that is very important in leadership is trust. As much as we need to put trust in people, we also need to trust our gut feeling because sometimes you have the tingling feeling that that one or two person might not work out. If you have that feeling and if you're contemplating that, my advice is just to cut your losses and move on. Chances are, it's probably better for you and that person that you're struggling to let go because it's not a good fit, as simple as that. The longer you drag it out, there's just be more pain and just miss opportunity. So this is where uh, one of the lessons learned is you just don't pick up anyone that walk into the door but really do your due diligence and really know their heart. Obviously, the bunch of people was not the right fit and, um, and I know in the future they'll cause a lot of havoc as well. So it's actually a good thing that they were yes. quickly. Stephen Covey mentioned that we need to run our own race and also Simon Sinek always ask the question start with why which is amazing because the, the reason why we want to be in business is we see a gap in providing film cameras as well as a place where you come and develop your film so that's super important and being a place where it's welcoming a safe space for anyone to ask any question no stupid question and we just want to give the best service from choosing the camera to the film to developing, scanning and eventually do community events like photo walks and exhibition together. Trust is a very important commodity. Also, it's one of the community as a leader we need to put in first. Because often, and this happens to me very often, that we'll be training and putting the best into everyone but not everyone will stay with you till the end. And often only a few of them do. But as a leader, if you don't put that anti of trust in them, you won't grow. You will probably be a one-man operation burning out and wondering why you can't get it off the ground. Because the business is just more than one person or two. It's actually a team of collective people with a shared journey and shared motto and shared ethos to how to make this work. 
So as a leader, I can run very fast, but if I'm not running with my team, then that's a problem. So you definitely be disappointed. Trust me, you will always want to be the best. You want to treat them as the best friend and everything. You even pay them first and pay yourself last. We need to be smart on how we choose the right people and just get the right people, get the right people on the bus, get the wrong people off the bus and get the right people in the right seat in the bus, which is very important. So another lesson I learned is I've been very aggressive in investing back into the business. One of the story that always stuck with me was the Microsoft story where in 2003, when they first started to pay dividends, the share price dropped. Not only that, but they also did not have the vision to invest in cloud computing. And as a result, for the next 10 years, they were playing catch up. So whenever you have money and not investing in the future, this is where there's a problem. And in film, as we rely so much on old developer and scanners, it's only natural that we need to start making our own machine again. So we sunk about half a million dollars actually in our CPA 800, compact processor 800, purpose to continue the creation of new film processing machine. We even made it open source because if we don't want to do that, anymore someone can pick it up and also we want to spur the community <coughs> together so that we can improve this together so we did kick started on this but we failed uh, but i'm very pleased to announce that we are still improving this machine mm. another lesson or another motto that I've always been carrying with me is a motto or the mindset of abundance the abundance mindset is very important for every business leaders. The pie is not as small as you think. And to be honest, if the people that betray us come to us to say, hey, we want to open a new lab, I'll say no problem. I'm more than happy to support them as how I supported some of these businesses below. The pie is always bigger than you can chew. And guess what? Matt, a rising tide raises all boats, meaning that if there's more film that's around, more people know about them, and the industry as a whole would become better. So please, abundant mindset is important because there's way more out there than you can think of. It's not a zero-sum game. The beauty is how we can unlock new markets and go into places where no one has been. <laughs> how we can unlock new markets and go somewhere no one has been and trailblaze a new path which is what we're doing with the CP Android and also our Nana camera which is important because this as a place where we sell so many second hand cameras we know the only way to make this and give film a much more future is having a very good quality point and shoot camera that's why we have Nana camera same name as Nana my daughter and the idea is that you have a metal body, a spherical lens, motorized camera that is just easy to use and take amazing photos. So with the new camera, CP800, uh, the compact processor, and also the back end system and the app we built to catalog film, and also the app we built to deliver photos, not to mention the software as a service platform we built to support labs on how we can catalog film and automate film and scan send out is going to be crucial for the future and if anyone want to use our service or platform please hit us up because we're all about doing this together so i just want to finish off with the fact that we made 1.4 million but I reinvest all the money and all in on the next project and more to come we have a great bunch of people working with us and heart on my hand I want to be the best out there in providing what we can provide another thing I learned very quickly is don't get into price game this is not a place where I want to be the cheapest and just go on price for to see who can race to the bottom I want to be a business where we can add value, 
to people and give people the ability to enjoy a better experience whereas to have better processor a better app delivering system or just a better customer service i always tell my team what's the one thing that we can improve this week if we can improve one thing in a week 52 weeks down the road we improve 52 things which is one year so look at what we need to do and how we need to uh, improve instead of going look, going around and see what our competitors doing it's brutal that's what I challenge everyone to do is just to see how we can improve ourselves run our own race don't really need to uh, comments or critic what other people are doing if people want to do it think cheaper they have their way but I would just want to be in here to be the best and to be here to last the longest thank you Come on, you finish that. Come on. Did you?